Hello, I'm Gamer Studio 24 and for my very first video game review video, I have chosen to talk about Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is an excellent game with great gameplay along with a colorful cast of characters. The gameplay itself hasn't really changed that much since the first game, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And Samanak did add a new ability called Phantom Dash. Phantom Dash is an ability that will allow you to temporarily phase out of existence and move through certain barriers. It also makes an excellent dodge mechanic, and I hope they keep this feature going forward. Though, something I feel makes very little sense is how they treat the Hover Boots. The Hover Boots was a gadget that was first introduced in Ratchet and Clank Future, A Crack in Time, but have disappeared and reappeared in the series since. In Rift Apart, though, you have the hover boots, and at the same time, you don't. When Ratchet and Clank get separated, Ratchet uses the hover boots to glide long distances, and yet he doesn't acquire them until he gets to Savali. So, yeah, here he acquires the hover boots, and they do exactly what they were supposed to do, which allowed Clank to move from point A to point B, at breakneck speed. I always thought it was weird about how he always had the hover boots with him now and only gets them again later. Or then say, here's like a, a mod for the hover boots you've already got to let you move fast or something like that. N nothing else. It's just this. I just think that's super weird. I think it would have been better if they had removed Ratchet's ability to glide as a gameplay consequence to losing Clink. Another way I feel that they didn't take more advantage of was Little Zerky's Arena. You only play as Rivet in the arena, but I think you should have also been able to play it as Ratchet. And he, like, both of them were given, like, their own sets and challenges. Rivet's got her own stuff to do, and Ratchet's got his own stuff to do in the arena. But no, you only play as Rivet. I also think they should have put a fourth arena battle in the challenge mode but we just get the same stuff as last time just a little harder another thing they could have done was give both ratchet and rivet their own gadgets and weapons i feel this would have made sense with the game's premise and show ratchet and rivet as different characters or more like different characters they've got their own distinct personalities that show how they're the same but also different but I feel like they could have done a lot more to make them feel even more unique than the other. Ratchet and Clank always came with various useful and strange weapons. From full auto pistols to the almighty and powerful Rhino. Each weapon is devastatingly unique and fun in its own way. But, one, but none of them hold a candle to the Rhino 8. The Rip You a New One is a weapon that has been in the Ratchet and Clank series since the very first game. And each one has gotten more powerful and stranger than the last. The most powerful one so far is the Rhino 8. The Rhino 8 is the weapon that functions similarly to the Dimensionator, but instead of allowing its users to go to other dimensions, it tears holes in space-time and brings objects from different universes and turns them into a weapon. And these aren't always random objects either. Sometimes it'll summon references to other Sony properties, and they stick around for a little bit so that we may bask in their glory. Although, it won't summon the most significant Easter eggs until it's been leveled up a bit more. So, this is what a fully maxed out Rhino looks like, as it is redubbed the Rhino Infinite. Not a lot of difference between the original Rhino 8 and this one. Just slightly different color changes and nothing else. I wish they actually did a little bit more to change it. Despite the fact that a lot of the weapons here went fully maxed out. Their design and functions changed drastically, but whatever. So yes, these items can range from the Jeep from Uncharted 4. The Airplane from Uncharted 1, and, in my opinion, the best of them all, the Thunderjaw from the Horizon games. But I swear, I saw 
other properties such as the van from Sly Cooper, the mascot from Sunset Overdrive, and I'm very certain I saw characters from the Jack and Daxter games pop up as well. But I've been using the Rhino Infinite numerous times and I haven't seen anything like that though since. Weird. A bit of criticism that I do have for the Rhino 8 is in its design. I personally think it should have looked a little bit more like a weaponized version of the Dimensionator since both of them rip holes in space-time, but that's just my opinion. But with such a high quantity of weapons, there are some that are going to be not as useful as the other. Like the wreck shot the Void Reactor, and the Cold Front, those weapons I found myself using the least. Now, they weren't bad, and they were fun to use, it's just the vast majority of all the other weapons I felt were more useful than those. I think Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart comes exactly as advertised, as its purpose was to show off what the PS5 can do, but I also feel like that's the problem. Because... I feel that it doesn't take full advantage of its premise in that it takes place in another dimension and is full of variants of Ratchet and Clank characters. Like, we get to see Rivet's versions of Skid McMarks, Rusty Pete, and Captain Quark, and their variants themes are Phantom, Pierre Lefer, and Captain Quantum. We don't see Big Al, Olga, or Lawrence, unless the Emperor's assistant was supposed to be that. But... Lawrence and the assistant don't even remotely look like each other. I don't know. I, I just think that fits a little weird. Anyways, these three were some of the few recurring characters throughout Ratchet and Clank series, and I would have liked it if we saw different variants of them in Rivet's universe. We only see Big Al as a parade float. That's all we see of him, and no one ever mentions Olga. We don't see Lawrence until the end credit rolls start and when there's like several cute drawings of the aftermath of the battle with the Nefariouses. Like, he's a dad now? Apparently, and like, Nefarious is like looking at them like super happy. Like, I, yeah. That's all we see of Lawrence. But I also like how different Rivet's friends are to Ratchet's. So, to me, the Phantom kind of is a bit more like a cooler version of Skid McMarks. At least, that's how I personally see them. And Captain Quantum is just Captain Quark, but is wearing a red outfit and cosplays as a pirate. He's, um, also smarter. And a bit braver. But, the one character I feel like is significantly different from all the other ones was Pierre Lefer. Like... The Pirate Extraordinaire. Yeah, so this guy and Rusty Pete, like, despite their physical similarities, their personalities are completely different, though. Whereas Rusty Pete's a bit more like a drunken pirate. Uh, Pierre is a, a little bit more than that. He's a French pirate, but he's also more like a showman as well, but... A showman with an entire legion of pirates that will 100% do whatever he tells them to do. That includes raiding and blowing stuff up. So I think he may actually be a bit more dangerous than Rusty Pete. I would have also have liked it if Rich interacted with more of Rivet's friends, like the Morts. His interaction with them would probably have been amiable, since Rivet and the Morts were so close. Uh, Rivet also mentioned two other friends of her whose names were Moidoy and Kletchki. Okay, so if you look closely, you can also see Captain Quantum in this picture, but then if you see the big guy named Moidoy and then the little guy named Kletchki. So, yeah, this is it. Th those are the only times that those two of Rivet's friends ever make an appearance, and we never hear from them ever again. We don't know what happened to them. Then there's another character in there that was named Ashley, which Rivet mentioned briefly if you go back to Zordoom Prison to try to look for all the collectibles. She starts talking about how they, how both of them managed to escape from Zordoom Prison, but we never really hear from her ever. I'm assuming she's the person that spoke to her 
in the beginning of the game when Rivet went to find that info bot. But that's it. We don't hear anything from him ever again. We don't know what happened to Mojoy Kleski or this Ashley person. Any of it. Just don't know. I also think that Ratchet and Pierre should have had a longer exchange. First time Ratchet and Pierre meet is when Ratchet saves him from being executed by his fellow pirates. He's hanging upside down and he's telling him how to find Captain Quantum. And I hoped their meeting would have been similar to how Clank reacted to Pierre when he first called him Rusty Pete. Uh, and he took insult to that and says, Rusty, I am not Rusty. I am Pierre Le Faire, pirate extraordinaire. It was something like that. But I think it would have been hilarious if Ratchet said, hang in there, fancy Pete, before leaving him there. And, oh man, he, Pierre would have been like, he'd be hanging there, like ranting out about the joke and calling him fancy Pete instead of his real name. Like, <laughs> I think it would have been pretty funny. I also think that Ratchet and Rivet should have had a longer first meeting and how they would have discussed about their similarities and differences. Like how they both have different colored fur and how different the shape of their tails are and how Rivet's got piercings while Ratchet doesn't. I, I would have liked a bit of a short story where Ratchet says that he actually tried to get piercings once but chicken out the last minute. I think that exchange would have been pretty hilarious. I also think Clink and Kit should have also had something similar to that as well. I could hear them talking about, like, all sorts of stuff, including that their own personal origins and uh, Plank telling Kit about, like, how he's, like, the son of a time god. I would have liked to have seen her reaction to that. Because I'd also like to know what exactly Kit's origins were. It's just like she was just a war bot built by the Emperor, but they didn't really go into that much details about how she was built or anything like that. Or why Nefarious never commissioned several other machines like her, since she was more than capable of wiping out the Emperor's entire army by herself. I, I feel like that that could have also have been interesting to know about. So, moving on to Nefarious, so... Dr. Nefarious and Emperor Nefarious are very similar in a lot of ways and not just like design wise, even though Emperor Nefarious looks like a more, should I say, intimidating version of Dr. Nefarious. But honestly, though, Emperor Nefarious is a bit more uh, unstable and unhinged. Than Dr. Nefarious. And these sets in my opinion. So I love how the developers made Rivet's versions of Ratchet's characters unique and different. With Pierre and Emperor Nefarious being the most uniquely designed and characterized. At least in my opinion. However, I feel like that it's got some continuity problems. What I mean by that is, is how they've never once mentioned General Azimuth or Emperor Tachyon. Because when Ratchet first talks to Rivet, he acted like this is the first time he ever met another Lombax when it wasn't. General Azimuth from Ratchet and Clank Future, A Crack in Time, was the first other Lombax he ever met, and he developed a very close relationship to him. Possibly as some kind of like a surrogate father, but then things didn't work out in the end, and Ratchet ended up mean having to fight him, and ended with Alistair sacrificing himself for, from destroying the entire universe. I just summarized everything kind of too much there, but... That's basically what happened in the end of their relationship. And then there was Emperor Tachyon, 
who was the main antagonist of Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction. I don't really like how they just kind of glossed over him. Like, never once was he ever mentioned. Like, when Kit was asking Ratchet about the history of the Lombaxes, of course, there's not a lot he's known about them, but he does know why they were exiled in the first place, and it was because of Emperor Tachyon. Considering the fact that Azmuth unintentionally helped Tachyon, you would have also have thought that there might have been some kind of mention of either of them. But no, uh, never once are either of them ever mentioned about this, despite how much of a significant impact they've both had on Lombax's history. But I never noticed anything like that during my playthroughs. What I also liked about the game were the collectibles. The gold bolts demanded a return and they did a lot of weird stuff to the world that lets you turn enemies into confetti bombs and made you send them flying towards the other side of the map or get infinite health and ammo, those kinds of things. You can also reskin your weapons and your ship. Although the weapons, they seem to have done a lot more to reskin them into common tools. And you can even switch out who has the hammer and the wrench. But I seriously think they should have let you reskin or customize Rivet's arm. I mean, it's a robot arm. That I think customizing it would have been something that Rivet would have wanted to have done. I mean, she's got a room full of spare arms if she loses the one she's using. So, I don't know. It just feels like that that was a bit of a wasted opportunity right there as well. But something I felt was interesting were the spy bots. So, the spy bots were the collectibles you needed to use in order to get the Rhino 8. But they don't just have blueprint pieces they also contain recordings from miss zircon as she explains details about every world you find them on i find that as an having them explain the lore of rivet's universe was a nice touch at least in my opinion however i think the most interesting of them all were the lorbs the lorbs are a collectible that can only be found on one planet and that's savali you have to accept a side quest from a monk who will give you armor pieces in exchange if you give him a certain number of lorbs. There's 12 of them in total, and each of them contain the recording of a Lombax named Max, who was the one who created a device called the Dimensional Map. Now, some of them contained Easter eggs and references to other popular Sony properties like... Sly Cooper, Jack and Daxter, Knack, those games, which I thought was a very, very cool. And seriously, though, Jack and Daxter is a game series that deserves a remaster, a, a, or at least a total ground up remake. I would love to see that game back. Probably not going to, though. So, to summarize, I think Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is an excellent game, even though it feels like a glorified tech demo and didn't take full advantage of its premise. I think it could have benefited from just being a little bit longer so they can add in some stuff in there that could have let us connect with some of the characters more and seen Ratchet interact with more of Rivet's friends, but oh well. It gives us a great experience, introduces us to various strange and interesting characters. Since they also introduced us to the multiverse in the Ratchet and Clank game, this is how I think things should go with the potential sequel. So, how the game ends is when Rivet, Kit, Ratchet, and Clank decide to go to the Lombax dimension. And given how bad their luck is, things don't go as well as they hope it does. Instead of finding a safe haven, they instead find a world under an authoritarian regime. And things got like that because the Lombaxes were so focused on trying to keep threats 
out of their home. They instead didn't focus on what was going on from within. But the one responsible for all the pain and suffering throughout the Lombax dimension isn't another version of Dr. Nefarious, nor is it another version of Tachyon, but instead is an evil version of Ratchet and Clank. Who would be a bigger threat to the entire multiverse than the series lead? I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and expressed my opinion of this game. And if you did, please like and subscribe.